Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. Uh, all the way on the other side of the screen, Mr. Van Metchke and uh, the wonderful gentleman sitting in the middle, our special guest, Don Boomer, the uh, brilliant, ever so brilliant, senior applications engineer from RF Venue. And uh, we were just talking off, off show that uh, one, of the, one of the fun things about going to most trade shows is uh, going by the RF Venue booth and Don always has a, oh, come here, you gotta check this out. We're, we've solved this problem now. And so, you know, we, we've done an episode with, with Don about good RF practices and, you know, all the basics of making sure your RF is solid and, and doing all the right things. But the reality is sometimes that's not enough. Uh, whether you're in LA or New York or some crazy, like bigger market where there's just gobs of RF to begin with, uh, or as, uh, Don was telling us last episode, sometimes you're out in the, out in the middle of nowhere, but, uh, uh, Microsoft or some of these other wireless providers are starting to hone in on uh, the wireless spectrum. So, so Don, let's talk about some of the weird stuff you've seen and some of the the ways that you guys have figured out how to overcome it. Because I know I know there's folks listening who who are dealing with that stuff. Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up, please subscribe, click that notification bell. And share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. Well, let's let's start with all the stuff that's free. I won't sell you anything. Let's just cool. clean up some things that, that might be a little invisible to you. Um, uh, you want to, obviously, uh, so we'd like you to have two antennas per room. You need an A and a B antenna per enclosed space. Sometimes it bleeds through the walls, but that's getting real iffy. So the proper way is to have an A and a B antenna in every room. If you're using separate antennas, because we make an antenna that has two of them combined, and there's some special benefits to that. We can talk about that in a minute. But so number one, uh, antennas work better closer to the stage closer to the transmitters than farther away. Just imagine you had a microphone, you had somebody singing. If you had the microphone all the way in the back of the room trying to pick them up, you'll get them. But if you move the microphone a whole lot closer to them, you'll get them better. So the same thing happens with your radio. You get a stronger signal, and that means your signal is higher above the noise floor. Uh, and that's the thing that we're always uh, trying to do. So that's, that's something you wanna do. Second thing, you want to separate your antennas once you have an A and a B. So if you're using two whips or two paddles, you're not using one of our diversity antennas, they need to be six feet apart. And if they're not, they interact with each other and you get some loss. So to, to cut that loss down to near zero, your antennas should be six feet apart, maybe up to 10 feet. Now, here's something people get wrong. Sometimes they put it all the way in one corner and the other. Now they're 50 feet apart. That's not a good practice. What, mm. has to what has to happen is both your antennas have to cover the same area. So easy way to think about this. If football field. If I put an antenna, if I put a paddle in each end zone under the goalpost and point them towards the field, I'll cover the whole field. But the only place I'll have diversity which is a thing that keeps you on the air for, for dropouts, is gonna be the middle two thirds of the field. Because when I get all the way down to one goalpost, the other antenna is now too far away. And so I've really only got one antenna, you know? So, so I don't have diversity if, if I need- You're handing it off, not, yeah. Yeah, it won't, it won't hand off. So the idea with yeah. diversity is, I think you can say everything now. I don't, they haven't made non-diversity radios for a long time. So your radios have two receivers in them and you have two separate systems. And then you have some logic inside the radio that picks the best channel and it switches to the best channel. It's not adding them together because they'd be out of time. So it picks the best one uh, and that's what it goes with. So hopefully, you know, when you, when you, we have all these little tiny black holes all over the stage uh, that are, very easily mathematically calculated, but you know, as you're walking four or five feet, you've stepped in and out of three or four of them. And so when that happens, 
hopefully you've only died in one channel and not the other because you've separated them by six feet. Uh, although it still is going to happen, that that still won't absolutely prevent that from happening. But you want to you want to split your antennas. You also don't want to be too close uh, to an antenna. So if you, I, I get this mostly with in-ear monitors. Oh, we got the antenna right behind the drummer. Well, the drummer's only six feet away from it. So again, just imagine yourself, it was the PA speakers. Nobody wants to sit six feet away from the PA speakers. They want to be 30 or 50 feet out there because you're blowing their heads off. And the same like thing happens a with a radio. Pressure washer. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so the same thing happens with the radio. The signal is so strong, it clips the front end. So you want to be, it depends on the strength of your antenna, but you, you, you want to be at least 10 feet away from your antenna. Uh, if you're using paddles, maybe 15 feet, something like and that. And there's a, there's a similar topic there, too, with your, your broadcasting power, too, right? Because I see that happening. Sometimes I'll go in, people are telling me they've got dropouts, and I'll go in. It's like a 300-seat room, and they've got all of the wireless turned up to basically full output, um, you know, 10 milliamp or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, let's turn these down. <laughs> well, yeah, so radio... So radios prefer to work at the lowest level they'll work at not the highest so we've kind of learned this in audio you go buy a thousand watt power amplifier you run a hundred watts out of it and you have 900 watts of headroom and that's a good thing for that once in a while thing that comes along that takes all the power out of it with radios that's a bad thing to ever have more than you need so when you get to 101 percent you're going backwards so you would be best uh, to, to turn down the power of your radio. So with your in-ear monitors, whatever you're doing right now, if it's working, if, if you have ones that are adjustable, most of them are, not all of them, but most of them are, try turning it down to a lower power level. And the reason we do that is the lower the power level is, the less your radio interferes with the, with the rest of the radios, right? All radios interfere with each other every frequency every kind so it depends how close together they're tuned it depends how much power they have and it depends um, uh, uh, the distance between them right so so um, but again it works just the same way your speaker does if you put your head right up to it, it's going to be really loud and and you have another radio right up to when Romeo and Juliet are singing the love ballad and they're arm in arm and their two microphones are six inches apart from each other those microphones are creating a lot of what we call intermodulation and when they do that th so it's actually generating phantom radio stations we can measure them they're real but they're just noise right and what happens is they start generating harmonics and if that if one of those harmonics happens to be a frequency that you're tuned to with another microphone or very close to it it interferes with that microphone so when Romeo and Julie let, let go of each other and they walk 10 feet apart, that's good. Now they're not making so much intermod, but guess what? They're walking closer to somebody else's mic, and so that's going up. So it's a, it's a very dynamic dance that we have to kind of keep track of. So operating at the lowest power you, you can is an advantage, right? So you're, you're, if you want to take your wireless microphone and you go all the way back in the far corner of the room, that's as far as you're ever going to be, right? And you can turn down the power. And if you're still on the air, operate there because you're generating less interference. There's no reason. It's the same way. You don't want an antenna that goes for a mile if you're only going to be 100 feet away from it or 50 feet is more likely because that means it's picking up extra interference that whole mile less 50 right. feet. I only want to pick up to 50 feet. I wish I could shut it off. I can't quite do that. But um, so we want to have the least amount of power. And the other thing that's free, and this is probably the biggest problem that I see. Uh, so there's two things to making a radio work. You've got to have the, the RF, the, the, the radio waves, get from where they are to where they need to be. That's what RF Venue does. That's what we can take care of. The other half of making your radio work is you have to find an open channel to tune it to. And as you have lots of channels, these channels, because they're generating those harmonics, start to interfere with each other. And so, all right, yeah, here, here's the shocker. If you have eight 
wireless microphones or four mics and four ears. If I say wireless mics, I mean ears. They're just radios. If you have eight of them together on the same stage, you are creating 42,000 of these harmonic frequencies. Now, most of them are extremely low. But when you walk closer to Juliet and with your mic, all of a sudden those bunch of ones jump out. So these are all these are all popping in and out. So what do you do? You get yourself a frequency coordination software. Okay? Uh, because the computer can calculate all 42,000 of those out real well and pick the best frequencies with your mics that will interfere the least with each other. It won't be perfect, but they'll be the best they could possibly be. So um, that doesn't happen when you use the built-in scanners on your receivers, right? It certainly doesn't happen if you mix brands because mm -hmm. one, 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 one manufacturer's got all their stuff worked out, but somebody else is on a frequency that they don't use. It throws the whole thing off. So you need, you need uh, a calculating program. Uh, if you want, the simplest one is one that we have on our website that's free. Just go to rfvenue.com, click on performance tools, and it says wireless system builder. And you, you go to that program, you tell it where you are, you tell it what microphones you have or what ears you have, and you push a button that will tell you all the frequencies that they should be tuned to based on that location. The only exception is uh, if you have some extreme uh, uh, interference generator. You know, I don't. Most churches don't have X-ray machines on stage, so you don't have to worry about that. No, but they might you know, have a T-Mobile tower on their roof. Uh, T-Mobile tower on your roof is going to be a really tough day. Although we do make <laughs> we do make filters that block out T-Mobile, and you may not need one today, but I'm going to say two years from now, if you don't have them, your radios probably aren't going to work. So put that in the budget. You're going to need it someday. So the, the the frequency coordination that's the other half. Right. I can get you the signal and it can be exquisitely good. But if you don't have an empty space to do it and right. unfortunately, some of these ones now, uh, well, almost everybody's mics now that will network will connect directly to a computer. And so if you've got sure stuff, you can connect it to wireless workbench. The problem is it, it can only scan the frequencies it can tune to. So you're you're kind of looking down, you know, you're looking like the, I can't see stuff over here. It can only right. see what it can tune to. So it's not getting a real good picture to scan with. Better than nothing. But that would be the other thing that you want to do that's free. Um, so if you do so all you those. Talk about, oh, good. Sorry. So you're in good shape. Mm -hmm. Wait, so when you're talking about trying to cover large areas, because this is what I see happen sometimes, whether it's a large venue or even a football stadium or whatever. You know, it's like, well, let's just turn the power up to cover more distance. But we've also heard now over our last episode and, and today that having the right antennas closer to the source is actually more effective. So if I'm trying to cover a large area, is it better to try to figure out how to have more antennas or yeah. do I crank the power? Yeah. So I guess if I'm doing a really big if I'm doing a room that holds 5,000 people or 10,000 people, what I'd rather have is a bunch of, of limited coverage antennas. And we make a thing called a four zone combiner, which is essentially a mixer for antennas. And so you can use a large number of antennas, but you can reduce their power so that they don't, they don't overlap. Uh, same way you don't, you don't want to use two microphones to pick up one thing because the sounds you get comb filtering. It sounds like you're talking through a tube. The same thing happens with your radio. But if I can restrict the space, um, then I can use more antennas. And that's a way to get above the noise floor. And someday that's probably the way we'll do it. We'll have a whole bunch of little antennas that only work for 10 feet. Then you have another one and another one and another one. And then it won't care what noise is going on outside because it's not amplifying it very much. Uh, that would be one way to do it. But as of right now, that doesn't. But the other thing would be you can also use that. So if you want to be able to use your microphone in the sanctuary and the narthex and the youth room and, and outside for a, you know, a, a, a cookie sale, um, you can put antennas in all those spaces 
and control it with one of these four zones so that as you just walk space to space, it automatically finds you and picks you up. We've so started to that, do that more. Yeah. yeah, we've started to do that more with uh, so many systems being Dante based. Um, you know, we'll put in uh, we'll put in Dante enabled wireless microphone systems. They can all be centrally located and with mm -hmm. antennas spread out in different parts. You know, they can use their normal eight in the main room and two over here, two over here, two over here. But then when they get to that big event where they need 16 on the one stage, you're not you're not changing anything. You're just carrying the wireless mic into the room you want to use them all in because it's all right. on one distribution system. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So high power is only a good tool if you have one microphone. Then high power <laughs> does high power does what you think you may interfere with the guys across the so in my town the three biggest churches these are all churches that hold two to four thousand people are on three corners of this one intersection actually they just built i'm told the largest catholic church in the country on the fourth corner perfect and so yeah so i put systems in there years ago and i mean we had to go talk to the guys across the street we had to do a coordination among all the people because somebody over there would turn something on and, and wipe me out here. And, you know, we all wanted to play nice together. So <laughs> need to make friends with that. You know, you can imagine what it must be like on Broadway where they got a theater every 25 feet and 50 microphones in that room. Um, well, right. So you have talking, to sometimes think about that. Even just talking to the folks here at Disneyland, I know a lot of the techs at Disneyland resort here in Southern California. And they just, they, they actually have people on the technical staff that their whole job is frequency coordination between all the shows that turning on, turning things on and off. They have schedules to when they, uh -huh. they, you know, the, this, this stage can't be on because this stage is on and has the same wirelesses. And it's just, it's you gotta be a nightmare when you have that yeah. many wirelesses. Yeah. Last time I worked with the Disney guys, I, they were telling me, and this was at Disneyland uh, uh, in Orange County. Uh, they told me they had somewhere just about 400 wireless microphones that have to run in the park. However, I worked with the guys at the Super Bowl, and on Super Bowl day, they have requests for over 3,000 channels, and they're not all on at the same time. Trust me, but you get a you get a frequency, and you're on from 315 to 327, and then you're off that frequency because somebody else has it, and they got to coordinate. It's not just wireless mics. I mean they. They count the number of hot dogs they sold wirelessly, but all these radios got to work together. And I'm going mm -hmm. three. I'd just shoot myself now. I don't know how they ever do it. <laughs> but you know. But if you're in a, is, if you're in a, a really tough RF environment, LA or you know the Super Bowl or whatever, you guys do actually make some product to go. Look, we only care about this really small space. How do we get really tight on this? Yeah, so so we make um, we make something called bandpass interference filters, and what they are is um, imagine the sections out of your electronic speaker crossover, right? You got the low pass and it runs to the woofers, and the mids runs to the mids, and the tweeter runs to the tweeters, and so the, the thing that we make is essentially like the mid range part of that. The tweeters don't come down into that. It doesn't leak into those in the base same way. So we can block things above and below. So we know where, where 5G phones are. We can block them. Uh, we know where a lot of the low band interference, you were talking about security radios. We can block security radios. We can block a lot of the interference from LED sources. So if you have LED stage lighting, or in particular, video monitors are, are mm -hmm. one of the bigger offenders. We can block a lot of that. that. That's over a wide range, and some of it's right in the middle of where you're trying to go, and so we can't get rid of that. But we can knock that down, I don't know, 40%, 60%. We can eliminate T-Mobile 99.99%. I mean, that, that one goes away. So you can add these. You get a pair of these. Uh, you connect them to your antennas before they go in your distro. So you buy two of these filters, and then whether your distro is powering two microphones or 200, they're all covered. And so you just you find a block that you have to tune between the highest and lowest number. And actually, we just released a new one that's universal for North America. So you buy that one, you don't have to think about it. Just plug it in, and it's, gonna, it's going to eliminate um, a lot of that interference and probably give you 
another four to six dB uh, in your dynamic range. Remember we talked about that 20 dB. So uh, if you're getting close to that, hey, four or six is a big improvement when you're shooting. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be something uh, I wouldn't put a new system in without them these days. Uh, if you've got an old system and all of a sudden it's like, hey, this was working really good for two or three years. And now, you know, every once in a while we got these little things that we never had before. There's a very good chance that's what you need to take that kind of junk out. Um, so, you know, they can talk to you about that. You can come up with the right, the right ones. Well, like I said, we got this universal one now that just works for everything. So that makes it easy. Yeah. Easy is good. We like easy. Easy. We like easy too. I don't want what to are, work hard. <laughs> right. What are some of the other uh, kind of more complex wireless solutions you guys have had to come up with just because, man, this just isn't working? Well, the big, the reason that we have a company um, is we invented, we invented an antenna that eliminates something called polarization crossfades. So antennas are polarized they're aimed and they've got to be lined up. So when you're, you're transmitting antenna and you're receiving antenna are in the same plane, there we go. They, they perfectly transmit and receive. You don't lose any energy. Well, if you think about it, the television station always broadcasts from that mountain and you put an antenna on your roof and neither of them move. They're locked down. So you're polarized. It's never going to change. But with a wireless microphone, you're always changing. So if you, if you consider a handheld wireless mic, and I hold it vertically, I don't have one in front of me, but here, that's a pencil. If I hold this, if I hold this vertically, and then just consider a whip antenna, and it's straight up and down as well. Okay, when that happens, your antennas are polarized, and your receiving antenna will suck as much power out of the air as your receiver will allow it to do. Obviously, $5,000 radios do it better than $500 radios, but they'll both be working at maximum. Okay, here's the big surprise. If you take that microphone that you were holding this way and you turn it like a singer and hold it this way, so now it's horizontal, but your, we got pencils, but your antenna is vertical like that. So when you've turned that microphone this way, that receiving antenna, you ready for this, is now picking up less than 1% of the energy it was when it was the other way. So you're good, you're good, you're good, and then you're maybe not good, and then you're good, and you're, yeah. So, uh, so you can't move the, you, well, I guess you could put, you put the antennas on motors, uh, you know, that's how they used to do satellites. <laughs> we, we, so we, in, so we invented, we invented this antenna that's both vertical and horizontal at the same time at the same point in space. So you could separate your antennas, which they should be. Remember I said they should be six feet apart and that's fine. And you can even turn one sideways. But at six feet apart, there's a time delay between them. You're, you're seeing two different radio waves and both radio waves could go bad at the same time. But when they're co-located in space, they only, it only sees one radio wave and it has to resolve that somewhere between zero and 90 degrees. So it's an antenna that will never lose the signal provided it can see the transmitter. You build a wall between it, well, that's a different story, but as long as, as, long as the transmitter sees the antenna, we developed an antenna that never drops the signal and it's the only antenna that'll do that. Uh, that's the reason we have a company. We, we figured out how to do that, but 12, 14 years ago, I guess. And, uh, and then just, you know, went on from there. So, so polarization dropouts, uh, are one of the leading causes, um, of that, um, as well as there's what they call multipath, which is echoes. So when you have a microphone in a room, yeah, the transmitter is going straight to the antenna, but it's also bouncing off every wall, every floor, every piece of metal. And so you're getting, hundreds or thousands of little echoes at your antenna and your radio has to figure that out as well. So when you use that antenna that we have, you cut that enormously, you probably cut 60 or 80% of the reflection away as well. It just makes it easier for your radio. And your radio is really good at solving that, right? But if it only can't solve it for half a second here and half a second there, you're going to miss three words. So that's, that's what it does. It, it takes care of that. That's one of the biggest polarization and multipath issues 
are probably the biggest reason that an otherwise working system gets noise in it or gets dropouts. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so just setting all your antennas like this isn't the answer. Well, it, <laughs> as opposed to having them both be straight, having one be 90 degrees, which is, you know, oh, I'm side <laughs> I always got to deal with the TV is backwards. Uh, so, there you go. so when you got them, I mean, that's 90 degrees, you, you know, you're used yeah. to seeing a 45 degree, 45 at each one is 90. So that's an electromagnetic wave goes through a 90 degree cycle every 90 degrees, does it four times in a circle. Uh, so that will help. But again, because each one of those antennas is seeing a different radio signal because it's, yeah. it's traveled a different distance. So, you know, in phase, whether, you know, whether we're up or down on that sine wave depends on distance. So it, they could both be bad at the same time. They absolutely will be sometimes. Uh, yeah. So we've just, we, we have eliminated that additional dropout uh, from the arsenal of dropouts, I guess. <laughs> And uh, I think one quick plug before we end here, um, not only have you guys created this uh, antenna that does all these magical things in, in one, which is not only really helpful from a, a performance standpoint, but it's also really efficient because you're not putting like the, I think about the football field analogy used earlier where you put antennas on opposite ends of the field. It's like now it's like here's both antennas in one place. Here's both antennas in one place, both antennas. So like it's, yeah. it's efficient. You've only got to mount one antenna. You put right. it on the wall, put it on a mic stand. Actually, the thing that we're most proud of, and it took us about six years to figure out, is so one of the biggest complaints we get, suggestions we get is, I'm not going to put that ugly antenna in my church, right? This is where okay. I was going. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we invented a way to make these antennas flat. And they yeah. now sit in, a, in an 11 inch square of plastics about an inch and a half thick. And you put it on the wall and you paint it to match the wall. And it looks like a Wi-Fi access point or an air conditioning duct or something. Nobody will ever even know it's an antenna. So we've got one both for wireless mics and for in-ears. So if you want to pick up, if you have a church that, you know, I don't know, even if you have a hundred foot stage, that'd be a pretty good sized church. If you put a pair of these, in the wing, put them both on the same side, on the wing on either side, you're covered. You're just done and nobody will even know it's there. Uh, and yeah. that's, we're, we're, we're really pretty excited about that because, you know, we had antenna performance down, but, you know, to some people, it was ugly. <laughs> what can I say? You know, it's a big, it's a big black thing with things sticking out of it. Uh, this is now, you know, invisible. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so that's we're we're really excited. It's the same way. It, the wireless microphone one is two antennas. It's the A and the B antenna in a single package. The 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 one for in ears we didn't talk about. So in ear mono. So we talk about polarization. In ears only have one radio in them, and so it doesn't have a second one it can switch to because there's no room. You know, you got to make the you got to make the belt pack small and it's got to run a long time on a battery so it really can't afford to put a second radio in there so there's a special kind of an antenna that's very important to use with in-ear monitors and it's called circular polarized and that antenna spins the pattern coming out of it in 360 degrees so it doesn't matter how you turn you never are out of polarization with that antenna. And that's the single biggest thing you can do to improve your in-ear monitor system. So even before you get dropouts and stuff, the musicians will tell you it starts sounds lousy. I get noise in it, I get birdies, I get, you know, you get noise and stuff. And that's, you haven't lost enough signal to drop out, but you've lost enough signal so that the sound is just crappy, you know? And so the circular polarized antenna will take care of 99% of that. It doesn't matter how you twist, you'll always be focused with the antenna. But you need to make sure that the in-ear antenna that, that is transmitting and the handheld or body pack antennas that is receiving, that they're not sitting right next to each other. Because they're still well, they want to be six feet apart. So yeah. all antennas right. want to be in this range that we're doing want to be six right. feet apart. 
So you put a pair of these babies on the wall six feet apart, and it's a done deal. Right. Um, the other and thing that, that you don't want to do, and if you're doing this in your church, what you don't want is to have your, your in-ear monitor antenna on one side and your wireless microphone on the other side, right? Because one's pitching and one's catching. I don't. I want them both on the same side, so I'm not throwing the fastball right straight into it, right? Uh, so they either want to both be on the same wall. They could both be on your back wall, pointed towards the stage. That's fine. Or they could be at 90 degrees. You could have one in the wings and one on the back wall and shoot them at the stage. But you just can't have them shooting at each other. Think about it the same way you think about a speaker and a microphone making feedback, right? Turn the mic the other way so it's not pointed into the speaker and you don't right. up. Same thing with radios. Well, uh, I think one of the things that you touched on earlier that's, that is important to reiterate is the output of the of the microphones because I, I tell you what, I go in places all the time and I'm looking through the menu of the microphone and the, the microphone output is cranked all the way up to high on every microphone. Yeah. And, and you know, they, the funny thing is for, for all you guys out there that have um, in-ear monitors that are sure PSM 900s um, and you just took them out of the box and turned them on, you're probably running illegally. <laughs> they have, they have more power. They have power enough that you need a license to run them on high power. And they come out of the box that way for some reason. So, so uh, that's a hundred milliwatts. You're, you're much better off turning those all the way down to 10 milliwatts. You'll still get 200 feet out of them. I mean, if you need to get somebody on the other side of a football field, that's a different story, but that's how often does that happen? Not very much in my world. So if you just need to get a hundred feet, you know, that's a long way for in-ear monitors, 200 feet. You know, if you need to run all the way to the back of the hall, that's fine. Uh, 10 milliwatts will do that with a circular antenna easily. So, uh, and the, the less power there is, the less that they interfere with each other and the less they mess with your microphones. So it just makes your whole system that much more stable. Yeah. I noticed that yeah. a long time ago when I was dealing with you know, multiple body packs, like from the, in a theater situation or whatever, you got way less because, you know, you got people all over the stage and you can't, sometimes they're two feet away. Sometimes they're 20 feet away from each other. You can't stop that. And then they, and having all the body packs on low uh, output actually improved the sound of all of it, like 20 fold. I mean, just like all the weird problems went away. It just it's it's counterintuitive to people who don't understand it because they think, oh, hi, it's better, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. It feels backwards, but that's the way radios work, and and even yeah. even if you only have one microphone, it will work better on the lowest amount of power that makes it work, not the highest amount of power. The radios, the the sensitivity of the radio, is better at low levels than it is at high levels. So yeah, they just, they just perform better at the lowest. You always have to walk test it. Don't take my word for it and then find out it doesn't work. So turn it on, put it on low power and walk as far away as you're ever going to get and make sure it still works. Maybe you have to come up to the second level. I doubt it, but uh, it might be, it just depends where you are. Uh, but the lowest level for all this stuff should work. You know, guys that do arena level shows are running them on low power. And then they even pad down their antennas. So that that seems really wrong, right? Well, and they're a but long that, way. They're a long way away. I mean, when you think about it, on a big field, the the antennas are usually on the are almost always going to be on the sidelines, or someplace like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it, it it depends. But even that, I mean, I've seen, uh, I've worked with coordinators that have the antennas, and they have two hundred feet of coax between the antenna and the input to the distro. And they still have more power than they need, so they attenuate it and make their radios uh, more stable and improve the sensitivity of their radios. That's kind of a high-level tweak, and it kind of takes some gear to measure it. But that's what happens. The the guys that are you know doing Elton John at the Enorma Dome uh, are not running on high power. I promise you. So this is a, a less is more situation. Mm hmm. Yeah. It really no. is. It really is. It's not usually, you know, we talk about less is more. Well, it's really less, but it makes your radio better. So, right. so we don't want any more than we need is what we're shooting for. 
Right. Well, and, and I think uh, look definitely take a look at those bandpass filters. We'll we'll make sure links to all of this stuff are uh, are below. But um, as uh, as the spectrum gets messier and messier, um, those kinds of tools become really big deals in your system. So yeah, very very cool. So. Well, we'll uh, we'll put some links down below for uh, uh, our venue as well as uh, some of their resources. Um, Don mentioned a few of them here, but uh, lots of great resources on their their website as well as uh, regular training opportunities with Don. So, uh, just really appreciative of you uh, taking some time out with us and uh, helping us all do RF better because it's uh, it's an important part of our systems. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, and once again, I mean, I know that this sounds like a broken record from us, but honestly, uh, RF Venue is doing, doing God's work on this stuff. They really are doing better work than probably anybody else. And um, at, at honestly, at affordable prices, because when you look at what mm -hmm. you guys charge for stuff versus even the big manufacturers, um, you know, from us, as in, from an integration point, we, we're like, well, that doesn't even make any sense because the RF Venue stuff actually works way better. It doesn't really matter what the price is, you know, so it's, it's, it's trying to be, you know, trying to get the most bang for the buck. I think you guys are really, you're, you're just in that sweet spot of it, it does the, what it's supposed to do and it's not going to break the bank and it's going to give you so much more return for your money to put, right, right. to put antennas, an antenna system in. It just, I mean, it's just a game changer on like every level of, 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 of RF, you know? So, yeah. yeah. No, all we want is to talk in that mic and keep having it make noise somewhere. Right. right. Stay on. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that's, that's what we're after. And that's, you know, that's, that's, we have quite a few products that, that will improve your chances of doing that very thing. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Well, uh, that, that's it for this episode. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, all the things. Again, we'll have uh, links to all this stuff below, but uh, we just really appreciate you listening. If you have other topics or uh, guests that you, you think you, we should be talking to, uh, drop that in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, this, this is for you. We have fun doing these, um, <laughs> but uh, well, we want to make sure that they're, uh, they're, they're giving you guys the answers that you want. So. Uh, very cool. Van, anything else? I don't think so. Just like and subscribe and share this out. And, you know, it just, uh, it does really help the more you like subscribe and share it. That makes the algorithm thingy majigger on YouTube, uh, work uh, and it gets out to more people. So there you go. There you go. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, watching. We'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next episode.